Welcome viewers, in this segment of the program we will discuss the standoff between Huawei, US and the Google Android. As you know, Huawei, second biggest smartphone manufacturer in the world, received a huge blow last week when the US Department of Commerce added Huawei and 70 affiliates to its entity list under the Export Administration Regulations. Following an executive order from the President Donald Trump effectively restricting US companies from doing business with Huawei without a government license. The move comes amid escalating trade war between US and China and the arrest of Huawei's CFO Meng Wenzhou by Canadian authorities at the request of the US in December last year. US authorities have alleged violations of the International Emergency Economic Powers Act by Huawei as it was accused of providing prohibited financial services to Iran, followed by concerns about the coziness with the Chinese government and fears that its equipment could be used to spy on other countries and, and companies. It is the reason why the US banned companies from using Huawei networking equipment in 2012. But the department on 21st May issued a 90-day concession or exemption on the ban uh, on the transfer of technology. The department said it will allow Huawei to purchase American-made goods in order to support existing networks and, provided, and provide updates beg your pardon, to existing handsets. The company is still prohibited from buying any new American parts or components without license approvals, which is all likely will be denied. Security experts have been warning about Huawei for more than a year, but it is only in the last week that those warnings have escalated into an all-out blockade on the company's US suppliers. There has never been a full disclosure of why the US government believes Huawei is such a threat. The first wave of concerns about Huawei had made had more to do with cell towers than cell phones. Huawei is one of the main suppliers for network infrastructure alongside Ericsson and Qualcomm. As carriers raced to build out 5G networks, lawmakers rushed to keep Huawei hardware out of whatever was being built. There was never any hard evidence of backdoors in Huawei's cell towers. But as intelligence experts saw it, they did not need to be. As hardware provider, Huawei needs to be able to deploy software the same way Apple deploys iOS updates. But as long as there was a pipeline from Huawei's China headquarters to cell towers in the US, there would be a strong risk of Chinese surveillance agencies using it to sneak malware into the network. Whether they did it with Huawei's help or by hacking themselves into the middle. And it was because of this fear that they imputed the National Emergencies Act on them. A report on the potential impact of stringent export controls on technologies found that US firms could lose up to 56.3 billion US dollars to export sales next five years. The report from the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation said the missed opportunities threatened as many as 74,000 jobs. The order handed down on Friday by uh, bans US companies from doing business with Huawei, which resulted in Google and a string of other companies cutting ties. But that rule has to do with what US companies sell, not what they buy. As a result, it is hard to see the latest action as protecting any security interests. Revoking Huawei's Android license does not matter for US network equipment, nor does Huawei's access uh, to chip designs. Instead, it feels like Huawei's device business has become collateral damage in a border fight over 5G. Still, the simplest explanation is that Huawei has behaved too badly to be trusted after years of intellectual property violations and trade secret uh, thefts. State, uh, beg your pardon, trade secrets thefts. But if that's the problem, it could set up troubling standards for other Chinese companies in the future, particularly given the broad scope of the executive order. The question is how far the White House wants to push its case and how China will respond. See you next time with another law and policy issue.